God said, well, because of all the years you've served me and you've brought so much joy and merriment into my life, I'll give you one option. Choose how you want to die. And the man said, Who? Mm, that's great. He said, Oh, generous and gracious God, God, if you will kindly grant my wish that I'll die by my old age, that's my desire. <laughs> and obviously, he was a man and he has a grand wish. ensuring that no one needs to be lonely during the festive season. There's lots of games, fun, friendship, music, and gifts. They've created an atmosphere of joy and optimism through faith that encourages people to aspire to be the best that they can be. Their vision of raising agents of change is what we need in our city. Raising a people who will be encouraged to discover and maximize their own potential and then go out to positively impact their communities. The concept of Southwick Restore and the approach to improving the quality of life and leadership potential in young people is ambitious and impressive. Peter and Theodore's dream of being a place 
where children can find educational inspiration, where neighbours can meet for various activities, where new businesses and jobs can spring up from, can be realised. This magnificent building, which I've enjoyed looking at the, at the murals on the wall myself, this magnificent building has been a place of concourse for 130 years. The church proudly displays these murals, designed and executed by James E.D. Reed. And these are certainly the most significant scheme of murals by this prolific artist anywhere in Britain. This young charity, although with a church base, is creating definite changes in this community with ambition, belief, and courage. We must join them because it is in change that we grow. So I welcome you all and wish you all a pleasant evening. Thank you very much. We'll be launching a number of books and a magazine, a church magazine. Um, these books are inspirational books, books that they're not just intellectual, they will also inspire you, I believe. And before we do that, I just want to ask a number of people to say a few things about the books we'll be launching today. Um, the first one I'd like to call on today will be Dr. Raymond Dennis to the book uh, that I know most about is the book on spiritual warfare the spiritual warrior and when I read it for the first time I was impressed at the depth of insight that Pastor Peter had in this field I understand also that the depth of insight comes with depth of experience and that over the years as he, has, he and uh, Pastor Theo have moved around in different countries they've had uh, tremendous experiences coming against spiritual problems of great depth and, and great difficulty and for people who would like to know more I would commend this book it will help you, it will guide you, and it will inspire you. And I have great pleasure in recommending this book on spiritual warfare. Thank you. It goes to the maximum. And tonight, as we enjoy this delicious dinner, I want to briefly take you through uh, the book that I'm uh, to recommend and to talk about and to launch today is the one that says Maximizing Business Advantage, uh, the Joshua Revelation. The R Joshua Revelation. But before I do that, if you will allow me, I just want to briefly... Uh, uh, thank God for, uh, for the maximum impact in this uh, Southwick and Sutherland area. I want to really uh, thank our uh, mayor and deputy mayor in, and the mayors in their respective places. Thank you so much for embracing this ministry in this area. Uh, our councilwoman, there's just no words to describe you. You are an angel that is hiding her wings. Thank you so much for whom you are. And uh, to all of you uh, that have embraced uh, Dr. Peter as he matched forward with the calling of the Lord upon his life, to make a maximum impact in this area. Uh, 
for the past 10 years. Amazingly, we are launching a book, uh, this book of maximizing business on the 10th year of this ministry. A 10 is a number that uh, really touch me every time I try to look at this book because uh, God take number 10 to be very significant. He take number 10 to be very special. Uh, in the Old Testament, we know that God has 10 commandments. Uh, in the New Testament, we know it was 10 lepers that Jesus healed. We know the Lord talk about 10 virgins, which the Lord uh, used to uh, prepare us to be always ready. He also talked about the 10 virgins, uh, the 10 uh, lepers, and the 10 talents, and also the 10 plague in eschatology or in the book of Revelation. Forgive me if I go too deep. Uh, not only that does he talk about 10, uh, 10 is the number of redemption. For it was 10, uh, it was on the 10th day that the Passover lamb was slaughtered and, and it was selected on, uh, it was slaughtered on the 14th day but was selected on the 10th day. Noah is 10 generations from Abraham. Um, Abraham is 10 gener. Don't get me started. <laughs> Like I said, Noah is 10 generations away from Adam and, Adam and 10 generations away from Abraham. So we have to see that the number 10 has a role to play in redemption. I'm coming to this book. So since, since Noah is 10 generations away from Abraham, God decided to choose Abraham who is 10 generations away from Noah and call on Abraham who is a businessman. Because Abraham is a man that sells cattle. No wonder when Jesus came, Jesus said, you don't know me. You really don't know my father, but you will not know my father through me. So let me explain to you who I am so that you can know who my father is. I must be about my father's business. So the, the work of the Lord on earth is a work of business. So this book, which is written as a maximizing of the business advantage, talk about the principle of Joshua. And the principle of Joshua uh, went on to let us know that we are triune. I explained that this uh, during the day, but I'm not going to go deep. We are triune. We are body. We are spirit that is housed in the body and have soul. And us being triune, one of our the aspect or one of the three element, uh, five elements we use. We have taste, smell, sound, hearing, and touch. But we use the sight and the hearing most. And the book of Joshua talk about seeing your pr promise. Hearing the promise and seeing your possession. Hearing the promise and seeing your possession. Most of us hear our promise, but we never lay eyes on our possession. We stand by the side of the river that keeps us from our possession. Listen, you do not chase you do not chase blessing. Blessing is waiting for you at the spot of obedience. You don't go after blessing. It is waiting for you. So this is the book that tells you about your blessing that is in your case. And you can stay in the wilderness as long as you want. But until you cross the Jordan through this book and cross. Jordan and possess your possession you will only look at it you will not have it let me go down a little bit deeper when you are going to cross your Jordan 
when you are going to cross your Jordan, the Bible says in the third chapter that the day that they were going to cross Jordan, that Jordan overflow its bank. Jordan will always overflow its bank when you are about to take a step into the calling of the Lord. When you are about to make an advancement into your business, something will always go wrong. Jordan will always overflow its bank. Jordan will always... Your tire may be flat. Your engine may drop out. Your utility bill will run over. Jordan always overflow its bank. But I got a news for you. I got news for you. In parentheses, everybody say parentheses. Everybody shout parentheses. Every time you see parentheses in the Bible, it means... That what I'm about to say is not included in the rest of the manuscript. It means this parenthesis is not part of the manuscript. In parenthesis, it was say that Jordan always overflow its bank in the time of harvest. Jordan always overflow its bank in the time of harvest. So the message there is this, that when you are about to take your step into your blessing, when you are about to maximize your business advantage and you see obstacles and you see problem and you see headache and you see financial difficulty, remember that Jordan always overflow his bank when in the time of Tell your neighbor your harvest is on the other side. Come on, say neighbor, your harvest is waiting on you. When it's overflowing, it's because you are getting close to your harvest. Every time you see problem when you are about to enter into your business it's because your harvest is ready. Tell your neighbor my harvest is ready. Oh bring up the problem. My harvest is ready. Bring up the headache. My harvest is ready. Bring up a, 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 a pain. My harvest is ready. But watch this. Watch this. I, I'm through. Watch this. Watch this. Jordan always overflow at the time of harvest is in parenthesis. That is, parenthesis means it's not part of the original manuscript. So your problem is not even part of the original. God said your problem is not even part of it. Your problem has nothing to do with your anointing. It has nothing to do with your blessing. It's not part of it. It's nothing but a distraction. Tell your neighbor it's just a distraction. It's not part of the manuscript. It's not part of the original intention. God said, I intend for you to go to Canaan. I intend for you to be blessed. I intend for you to have more than enough. But overflowing of Jordan is nothing but a distraction. But let every distraction be an announcement for your blessing. I want to launch this book, but I want, oh, did I just, I'm sorry. But I want to give you an opportunity to know that this book is a destiny changing book. This is a destiny changing book that will let you know that God, your tomorrow is calling you from your yesterday. Your Canaan is calling you from your wilderness you have left Egypt but there's always a wilderness in between and your Canaan is beckoning you for you to go beyond the Jordan and step into the unknown because until you step into the unknown you will never experience the unseen 
This is the book that is calling you to go beyond yourself and go into the new arena. God is calling you to a new height. I want to just briefly, just briefly say blessing, not only on this book, but on everyone that is here, because no matter what you are, you are in a business of one kind or the other. No matter what you are doing, you are in a business of one kind and the other. And every business will experience obstacles. We experience the overflow of Jordan. But I want to do what the book of Joshua does. It's a book of courage. It's a book of, that says, take courage for the Lord is with you. Take courage because you can overcome. Take courage because Canaan is waiting. I want to encourage I want to pray a prayer of courage that you will have courage to step further into your calling, to step further into, your, into what God has for you so that the, the noise of the enemy and the destruction of the enemy will not hinder you from attaining Canaan or his bow. First of all, I want to invite those who have not known God as their Savior to take the advantage of this moment and become part of the Exodus, become part of those who are called out. And we have to be always very careful because our out of always hinder us from our into to step into an unknown vast land called the wilderness where you will face your Jordan and you will even face the first battle that you will face when you cross Jordan. But whether you know it or not, God will allow you to be circumcised with flintstone. And when you are circumcised with flintstone, you will leave childishness behind. Because some circumcision is what divides you from manhood to childish. While you are in the wilderness, childishness, immaturity take over. But when you are circumcised with flintstone, God has matured you from your wilderness into the new promised land. Today is the day that God is calling you to leave what you have been playing with for so long. It doesn't worth it. Canaan is calling. Father, I release your anointing in this place over those, first of all, who have not recognized you as their Lord and their Savior. I pray, oh God, that you prick their heart and let today be the day they will say yes to you and give up everything that is like the overflow of Jordan. For we must cross this Jordan we must cross this Jordan. And for us to cross this Jordan, we need you to part the sea. We need to, you to part the water. But we cannot receive your anointing to part the water unless we belong to you. So I pray, oh God, that anyone in here that has not given their life to you will be restless until they run to you and say, what shall I do to be saved? I release the anointing that drop men to God. I release the anointing that make men say yes. I release the anointing that call the prodigal son home. In the matchless name of Jesus. All God's people shall glory. glory. Finally, I want to launch this book that the, Lord, the blessing of the Lord may rest upon this book. That he who reads this book will receive an insight that to, uh, their spiritual eyes will be opened. Their spiritual ears will be listening and they will move from the natural to be supernatural. Because we are not a natural man having a supernatural experience, but we are sp supernatural spirit having a natural experience. And I pray that your supernatural will take over as you read this book and God launch you into a new direction. Father, as people read this book, release the anointing of the Almighty that you will take them from the guttermost to the uppermost. That you will cause them to, to, to yield themselves and open their hearts to you. In the name of Jesus, all God's people shall glory. glory. Come and shout glory in the house.